Hey friends, welcome to another vlog. I am cutting in before the beginning of this vlog to tell you that this vlog was kind of epic. Uh, so I wanted to also warn you that I'm about to iron hair for 30 minutes. I started out just showing you how I was doing it and then I just started talking and you guys seem to like it when I just talk to you. So treat this uh, at least next 30 minutes <laughs> like kind of like a podcast, like do something while I talk to you. Um, because otherwise you're just gonna watch me iron hair and there's some very good shots of my belly and an iron and a wig so that we can get it to this state. Uh, and then after that, I'll come back <laughs> and uh, start rolling like normal, like you'll see my face and stuff. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick warning. Next part, vaguely interesting visually for a few minutes and then it's me just talking to you. Hey guys, it's Sunday. Why is Sunday? Well, <laughs> yesterday got kind of away from me. I ended up having like a two and a half hour phone call with some friends that I was sort of unexpected, which was delightful, but it also meant that I didn't do any of the things I was supposed to do yesterday. So that's cool. And now it's Sunday night and I am standing here trying to figure out <laughs> this wig. So I was a bad vlogger. Oh, my hair's down weird. Um, I was a bad vlogger and um, I started fluffing this wig up while I was on the phone. So we are getting a rather hedgehoggy situation going and I'm not gonna fluff it up anymore because it'll just get frizzy and I can fluff it up the day of when I'm there. So mostly what I'm trying to do is figure out it's a giant mullet, which is fine, because that what I'm looking for is a mullet. But I need to take all this hair that I didn't fluff up down here that's still in these like almost perfect curls, and I'm going to iron it smooth. Because what I'm going for is smooth, and then sausage roll end. And I'm like, did I mark the page for this? No, I didn't. Cool. Can I find that again? Possibly. Mmm. Nightmare. What I'm going for is sort of that situation. So I'm going to make these straight. Everyone thinks like I could possibly roll them into sausage curls around my finger, but that wouldn't make the top part of it straight, which is what I actually want. So I'm going to go ahead and iron them because um, Lynn says I can iron it. So I'm going to give that a go and see how that goes. I did get more fairy godmother mail with this pashmina that I'm going to bring with me, which is perfect, says blue, but it's also not matchy-matchy, which is fantastic, and she's such a dear. She sent me another reticule <laughs> so that I have one that matches that dress, so man, I'm bougie. Okay, so I'm gonna go try and iron this on synthetic with my iron. I'm just gonna pick one piece and iron it, probably the very bottom piece, <laughs> and see if that works. Lynn, Lynn says it will, so I believe her. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so that definitely does work, like I've got him straight, so. That's pretty great. And they don't need to be like perfectly straight, but I just wanted to see how straight I could get it. Um, I only used a couple curls here, though, and this will take forever if I do it the way I just did it because I was passing over them very slowly. I'm definitely using steam, and that's helping. So I just to get braver about how long I can hold it on there. <laughs> I'm scared I'm going to melt them, but I guess that's kind of the point. Anyway, I'm going to try and get as much of this done tonight as I can as straightening them and then I'll worry about curling them maybe tomorrow. Okay, I have a bunch of this straightened. I'm feeling good about this. Um, it does take a while and like straightening your own hair, you have to do it in sections and stuff, but I'm getting better at knowing how much heat I can put on it before it does anything crazy, so I'm feeling like I can at least get it straight. <laughs> And if I put it in sausage rolls and it doesn't work like the first go, I can always just dunk that part. Like I've separated it out pretty good. I can just dunk that part in boiling water and then let it dry and it will dry into sausage rolls. So I'm going to try her freezer method though. Okay, I'm going to try and show you what I'm doing. I don't know if this is going to work out. thought I would also answer a couple questions while I'm here. Oh. Uh, people are asking what the red thing, which is like this thing, from Bernadette's video was. Um, 
So we went to Makuba when we were together in New York and we found this thing and I started screaming worm because it looks like a worm. But it, honestly, it is the softest, fuzziest chenille ever and I just wanted some to take home and pet. Um, but I didn't buy it and I was really sad and I continued to be really sad for a long time about it. So when Makuba was having a sale, I just basically started screaming worm at... <laughs> Uh, Bernadette until she bought some and then mailed it to me. Okay, so I have established that you need to use a lot of steam and when it starts making that noise that sounds like a volcano is about to erupt, like when it's building up steam, that's definitely the time to hit it. Um, you almost want to get it wet with steam. You want it to make that like super steamy sound. That melts it pretty fast. That noise is the best noise. <laughs> I should take advantage of that. So when your iron is naturally just like sitting upright making that noise, I definitely use that to my advantage. And then I sit here and I comb them out. Um, and I lost a few hairs, but not very many actually. Um, there are some snags, so I just sort of, you know, fix it. I have this pinned to my board up here, but I definitely hold it to try and limit the pull on that because um, those pins are not very secure. I'm just flying by my seat in my pants. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just learning. So, um, but this is working and it's looking really good. So I just hit it with a bunch of heat and water basically. And then um, if I can, I comb and water and heat right behind that so it's at its like straightest possible but there's a snag in here so i'm trying to like get that snag oh that's the noise yeah just wet that shit down <laughs> um yeah this piece is pretty good i would use that but and it's it's so it is wet like right now this looks wet wet but i feel like it's fine and it will dry it's just like just like plastic hair and it does get a little frizzy on the ends just like mine do when I um you know because I have straight hair so the ends get a little frizzy but I'm like oh it's believable also you can kind of iron that out <laughs> which you know as with human hair you can iron that out um so I just get down to the bottom here and when it's all like calmed out I hit it one last time iron over all my Bucky water spots that somehow happen. And I have it on synthetic, but a little bit more towards silk. And you can kind of hold it on there a minute. Yeah, I think I lose like one or two hairs each one of these. Oh, I want to use that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, somebody in the Q&A was asking where I get my patterns from. So, I mean, where do you guys get your patterns? Um, <laughs> I get mine from the internet, mostly. Um, like, all my Victorian patterns are obviously from Truly Victorian. So, they're like the one-stop shop for Victorian clothes. Um, what's going on under here? Oh, is there a whole bunch of them I didn't even notice because it's tucked under? Ugh. Ugh. It's okay. Um, yeah, um, a lot of them come off Etsy, like a lot of, uh, small pattern makers put their stuff up on Etsy, so I buy from Etsy quite a bit. Um, I take about this much hair at a time. Um, but I, again, I don't know what I'm doing. It's actually kind of easier the smaller amount you have, so if you can, like, separate them, this one's got, like, some sort of attachment issue <laughs> like hair does it's basically just like hair my um, aunt I was telling her about this and she was like oh I used to iron my actual hair in the 70s because they didn't have flat irons back then so they just I guess in the 60s they just ironed their hair so and it takes a bunch of passes like you gotta do this a lot like this takes a while so I mean you're gonna see that And when you touch it right afterwards, it's hot, so be careful. 
So that was actually really effective, <laughs> like, because I got a good amount of steam and I had held it on there for a long time. So, yay. I have a feeling this is going to ruin my iron board. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ruin my iron, ironing board cover at least, but that's okay. I don't mind it having stains on it. Um, I just keep ironing over the parts that have water on them to try and minimize the staining. People are asking me how I keep it so clean. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, if you iron it after leaking on it, it sort of like goes away. But maybe that's just this board. I don't know. This is a very special board. Um, it's made out of the stuff that the stuff that firemen's jackets are made out of. So it reflects heat back up. Um, instead of absorbing it down through the board, um, which means you can actually iron on a lower setting than normal because you're getting more heat. Um, but also for some reason it supposedly protects fabric. Like when she demoed it, she put a piece of silk charmeuse down and she put her iron on like, I wanna say wool or cotton and then just left it there on the silk and it never burned <laughs> and I was like, I stood there for like five minutes too, and I was just like, what? All right, give me this board. <laughs> so I bought this cover from her. Um, I don't remember what the shop's called. I think like the Miracle Ironing Board or something. I'll, I will put a link down below, absolutely for you guys, because you guys are gonna wanna know where that comes from. Um, and I literally put this on over the cover that came with my iron. But yeah, I think I can wash this too. Like, the foam is not attached to it, so I'm probably going to take it off after this and wash it because I feel like these water spots are hanging out. <sighs> oh, that's a good sound. And I just kind of pull it while I do it to straighten it out as much as humanly possible. And, I mean, you can see it's very effective. You just have to be willing to... <laughs> hold the iron on there way longer than you think is okay to hold an iron on plastic and everything will work out. What was I talking about? Patterns. Uh, yeah, so I don't really use the big four very much. People keep trying to talk me into simplicity patterns and I'm, I'm becoming a giant snob about them. I know that American Duchess has done a couple patterns and I think I have them both. No, four of them. And I have them all. Um, and those should be fine. I really don't like the amount of ease that comes in big four patterns, especially for historical stuff, like their costuming line. It's not really my jam, and apparently I'm a giant snob. <laughs> um, I just find I can't trust the measurements, and right? And like a lot of those clothes are actually made to very much fit you, like very, very much fit you. There's like a kink up there, so I'm just trying to iron it out. Um, but that doesn't really matter all that much um, for the purposes of what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so I get a lot on Etsy. I get a lot just from manufacturer websites of, of like whoever the person is. So, I mean, I use a lot of Laughing Moon patterns and I use a lot of um, Truly Victorian patterns. So I just buy from them, basically. So... Um, JP Ryan patterns, I buy on JP Ryan's website, so those are, that's where I get my patterns, guys. Um, I do the internet thing. Uh, I haven't seen, like, Joanne's carry any of the, like, costumer patterns, other than the ones that are, like, you know, McCall's for costuming patterns and simplicity costuming patterns, but like, you know, sense and sensibility patterns or, um, Scroop is a new pattern company. Um, yeah, you have to buy all those, like, through their websites, so that is currently what I do. Um, I noticed in the comments from my first Q&A that people came back a lot trying to tell me how I can have cheap fabric. And I'm like, oh no, I know I can have cheap fabric. <laughs> I know I can go to the thrift store. Actually, the thrift stores here are really expensive. Um, I went to buy 
I wanted to buy a sheet so that I could make a corset out, like just as a, you know, the outer layer of a corset was a Disney princess pattern and it was a used twin sheet with Disney princesses on it and they wanted $17 at my local Goodwill. So yeah, and I know there are cheaper places and stuff, but I want to buy the best possible fabric I can buy. And I do buy muslin super cheap on the internet usually, so I can get that down to just a couple dollars. Um, so that's a lot of times I just line with muslin and I do all my mock-ups with muslin. So, but I'm, I'm like, did I trigger you guys in some way to like tell me where you guys get cheap fabric? Um, Cause I, I, I don't use cheap fabric. <laughs> I have no problem with cheap fabric. I just like silk taffeta and so yeah but um oh maybe I said maybe you guys are telling me that because I said sewing is expensive it is expensive but it's expensive if you want nice fabric which is what I want right like yeah I could make less fancy stuff with less fancy fabrics but why would I spend a hundred and whatever hours <laughs> sewing a dress if um I was not gonna have I want to be a princess, basically, is what I'm telling you. And if I'm going to spend that much time and energy, which is kind of precious to me on making these things, then I definitely want to be a princess. And that requires nice fabric. So it's very difficult for sewing to be cheap for me. Um, but for people who are new and just are doing practice things or linings or mock-ups or whatever, Yes, go to your local charity store and get yourself definitely some fabric there if you can. Ours doesn't, the ones around me at least, there's probably some that are higher up in the bay than where I live, but where I live, there's no fabric section. And if there is, it is all polyester and I am like, nope to that. <laughs> um, I prefer natural fibers when I can get them. So, as I'm kind of like weirded out about well, other people's old bed sheets, I guess. I know what I do on my bed sheets. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, to other people's. I hope this is helpful and informative watching this because otherwise you guys are bored out of your minds. Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm like not quite halfway around, but you know, getting there. I am definitely interested in getting this done as much as possible tonight. Um, and then moving on to the next part of it tomorrow. I also pulled one more weft up than I think I might want, so I might actually just frizz that out and give it a hair cut, so I'm not sure. I've never cut hair though, so does this seem like a great idea just mere days before the event? Should I order another wig just in case? <laughs> Thoughts? Opinions? I mean, the worst case scenario, I will go with my own hair. And that's the way it will be. <laughs> like, I will just have my own hair and I will put it in a ponytail and curl the ends and it will be adorable. It will be like a Bernadette Banner uh, postcard. Oh, actually, a Bernadette Banner postcard right here actually has a hedgehog on it. That's funny. <laughs> Hang on, I'll pick you guys up in just a second. I'm not. I'm not wasted in this hotness right now. I'm just like real hair and kind of gentle when I comb it until I get to like a snag and then I do what I have to do. You could probably cut the snags out too if you wanted to. Like they're usually on the very tip so it's not gonna kill you to lose that quarter inch or eighth of an inch or whatever it is. Um, let me pick you up and show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I was threatening to do this. <laughs> this is kind of like the dress I'm wearing. I mean, almost exactly. Except for it goes to the floor. Um, but this is a hedgehog. So that is what I was considering doing. Making it fluffy here and then there. <sighs> we'll see if that works out. <laughs> uh, T minus five days until my trip. So, and that includes the day I leave. I haven't started packing yet, but I have my suitcases out and I have packing lists being made. And I'm waiting for some of those bags that you can puff the air out of. Um, and actually, I'm not buying them for the space saving capacity because I'm not worried about space at all in my suitcases. My suitcases can hold my stuff, no problem. I'm actually more worried about the weight. That is why. I have concern about, and I am bringing two suitcases by the way, I'm just storing one at St. Pancras Station um, and then swapping them out when I go through that station to get to Bath. Um, so I do have to pack like two sets of like toiletries and stuff because I'm just going to swap them out, I'm not going to open them up um, and I have enough space for that now that I have two suitcases, it's fine. Um, I'm worried about weight, but what, the reason I'm putting them in those bags is largely um, in case the suitcase gets like mishandled or something spills in it or on it or it gets wet or anything like that. I don't want my costumes getting messed up because of some dumb thing that happened in my suitcase, right? So um, I'm putting them in there mostly because they're giant Ziploc bags and so I got the jumbo ones which fit, you know, giant things in them. So I'm going to use those in my suitcase. I mean, they do help with space, but actually my Regency one, my Regency suitcase doesn't, might not even have enough stuff in it. Like I need to possibly strap it down better. Ooh, that's a good one. It's probably too much steam to have it just like on the regular. Let me just turn that down a bit. <laughs> this cord is sopping wet. Oh, but that's a really good, that's a really good, Chunk there. Um, I'm wondering if there was other questions that people asked me after the fact. Hmm. No. I'm really glad you guys liked the Q and A so much. So much. Like that was exciting. I got a lot of really great feedback on that. Um. Yeah. Why are you like this? You were like my own hair. I bought you because you're a wig and you're not like my own hair. Okay, this is one where I'm just gonna cut it out because I'm annoyed. continue doing this because you guys are probably bored out of your minds and uh, I'll let you know when it's all done. Oh yeah, I got so many messages telling me that the lid to my box was on the ironing board. Actually it wasn't for all of you who are freaking out about that. <laughs> um, that was actually another box. There's a whole other box there, a, a top and a bottom. The lid to this, the one I was looking for, was actually buried underneath a bunch of stuff that was on my big table. But good eyesight, guys. <laughs> I bought two necklaces, right? Because I bought the red one and I bought the blue one. So there are two boxes floating around this universe, although I put them both in one for convenience right now so that I remember to take them both. Um, although, mm, they go in different bags. Oh, that is one thing I have to transfer over. I should make a list of all the things that I need to make sure that I do sort of bring with me separately from my suitcase so I can bring it to both places because I need that red one for both costumes. So I do need to remember that. I might I might bring my suitcase my jewelry in my carry-on anyway. So that seems like a smarter idea than baiting any kind of uh, airport security. Although I used to work for an airline. I worked for Virgin America for a while. Um, I helped them launch their, their company, 
Um, so I worked there before. We actually flew planes and then for a little while after before I went to work for Apple. Um, and I can tell you baggage handlers and TSA agents are significantly more trustworthy than you would think. Like they see some, they see some things <laughs> and they don't take it. So, I mean, of course there's bad apples, but um, for the most part, they are very well vetted and they are very honest folks. So I still feel like not baiting people is the way to go in life. So yeah, how do I feel about wigs at this point? <laughs> hmm. I wish that I didn't, I wish that I had a, a, a better grasp of how to do this. So I feel like it's going fine though. So that's positive. Could be much worse. It is not, so that's great. I'm gonna put more pins in here to hold those down. I just keep coming back. It's like not gonna stop. Um, <laughs> a lot of people keep telling me about bootstrap patterns. So I know about them. Uh, so everyone can stop telling me about them. Um, but I do appreciate you guys looking out for sure. Um, it's just really funny because I get like eight comments per video about them. Um, I don't uh, quite understand. I, I think probably it's me. I'm probably saying that my dress form isn't exactly me. And it makes everybody react to try to get me a dress form that is exactly me. But that's not really what I'm looking for in the world. I want to take my uniquely you and make it uniquely me someday. I'm just not willing to spend the time to do that now. And if I'm not willing to spend the time to do that right now, I most certainly <laughs> would not spend the time to make a bootstrap pattern one right now because that is significantly more work. I watched a review on that and those things are a lot of work. So while they are definitely a cheaper route to go on and I'm totally down for you guys mentioning it in the comment section because that helps other people who are looking for a cheaper alternative to buying a dress form in its complete way, I will never probably make a bootstrap because I like my Uniqlo. I like how padded it is. I like that it's the same measurements as me. I like that it's very closely close to me. Um, so I will someday form my Uniqlo me in the actual shape of me. But I definitely don't have time for that right now. And I think bootstrap would be an even bigger time commitment that I am gladly unwilling to make. <laughs> um, it sounds like a cool idea. It's one of those things that's like, I would rather make dresses. <laughs> I would rather spend my time making dresses. Also, um, I have a tech job, so if I were that involved in getting a precisely exactly me one, I would absolutely go the laser route. <laughs> because we have 3D imaging places like on the street that I work on. So I could go get a 3D image one um, made for me and I um, wouldn't have like a financial problem, I guess, paying for that. My reason I don't do that is because people change so quickly. Like I lost 25 pounds last year and that changed my body shape a lot. Um, it's another reason I don't like hack into my uniquely like immediately uh, immediately being like I've have had this thing for like five years <laughs> um, but I don't change her form her base form too much my bammer battery died that doesn't usually happen when I'm, I'm filming uh, anyway yeah so um, I change size like you know not super frequently but frequently enough to make me go like nope to bootstrap because I would not want to sink that much effort into it and then suddenly become larger or smaller and have to scrap that and <laughs> remake another one or change that one uh, dramatically. So yeah, that's why I'm not into bootstrap, but I've seen them made and they're really cool. I just also don't know, like I love my Uniqlo U and I don't know that I could get it as stuffed as well as the Uniqlo U is. And I don't know that I could get it 
as like um, like the foam in it is really good. Everyone that I've seen make them seems to think they're kind of lumpy because of the way you have to stuff them. So I don't know. Yeah, the, those things are not my jam. People seem really excited about them though. So if any one of you guys ever makes one, please let me know how your experience was. I looked at it and I estimated it would take me about 80 hours to actually make one, fit it, make it perfect, get it stuffed, and then I still wouldn't have something that I'm as happy with as my Uniqlo. Um, and I could spend that 80 hours doing something, like I already have a dress form, <laughs> so why would I do that? Um, uh, yeah, but if you guys do it, let me know how long it took you. I am the sewest slower and slowest sewer in the world, I think. People kept telling me I was fast. I was like, no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> um, especially with something like a dress form, I would want it to be exact. And so, yeah, I guess that's what I have to say about that guy. Um, are there other things I want to tell you that I already know about so everyone can stop telling me things? Um, uh, yeah, I know that Zach Pinsett exists. Um, I... He will be featured, actually, in my trip vlog because um, he is going to come and be one of the lecturers to us on our trip. So for those of you who like to let me know that Zach is a person in the world, I am aware. And I am um, happy to say that I'm about to go meet him face to face. And I have had a couple of conversations with him. so. He's a very nice fellow and um, super, super skilled at his craft. Like I am so in awe of how good he is at his work. So I am excited to go learn tailoring skills from him. Let's put it that way. Oh, someone made a really fantastic suggestion about sewing books, which is go to your library, guys. Libraries are like awesome. And uh, there are sewing books at the library, so if you cannot afford sewing books and would rather have a book than learn from YouTube or the internet, then you could happily go to the library, it is free, and check out a sewing book. Library cards are free. I think you just need to bring proof of identity and like where you live, usually. I don't know, you have to check your own library to know those things, but... That is what it was like at mine. Okay, I think this looks awesome. Like this is where the sausage rolls are gonna come out. I might like get some of this floofed in a different way or whatever, but I feel like it's good. I might cut off a little bit, but I feel pretty satisfied with this and the hedgehogginess of it is great. Okay, so I'm looking through Instagram and I'm looking at the hashtag uh, hedgehog care. Oh, there's Kate, this is my friend Kate. Willoughby and Rose. Go follow her, she's awesome. Um, so I'm like looking for hair ideas, like this one's really good, but it's a little bit more structured than I want. Um, this one's really good, I like her hair, but her hair is more curly and less frizzy. Um, what else we got? So I think I'm on the right, like this one's really good. I like that. It's great hair. So I'm gonna do sausage rolls like this and then little frizz, frizz bits on the side there. But what I'm getting is like, most of these stop. This one's more frizzy, which I like. Um, they stop like a little bit at your ears or past, oh yeah, I remember this one being like this scary like I'm just like ah uh, um what's it called uh silence of the lambs yeah <laughs> um but the back looks like exactly what I want which is like frizziness and then some of these things so they all stop like the the puffiness of the top frizzy part stops around um like the ears so what I'm getting at is I think I have to cut this so come here head um I think I need to take off all the curls like after about this point. So what I think I'm gonna do is go to this layer right here and I'm just gonna give it a little hair chop and that's terrifying. 
I still have time to order another one if I need to, so I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, I feel like first bits were successful. I don't know much about curly hair, but I do know that you should cut it all at different levels if you're gonna cut it. Like I cut each individual curl thing separately so it's not like a straight line because I think that would look really weird. So I'm just gonna go around the head and do that. I have basically a trash can down here catching for me and I'm using some craft scissors and just chop, 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 chop at all different angles. So hopefully this works out. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. I mean, this just needs more poof, which I will add more poof to it, like with hairspray and stuff when I get there, because I don't want to deal with really all that right now. And then I'm probably gonna push some of this like a little bit back out of my face kind of situation and hairspray it. Um, and then it'll have the curls, so. I think I'm feeling pretty good about it. Haircut looks good, I think, based on all these pictures, but God, who knows. So let me try and curl this and see what happens. Okay, we had some mail. I got these jumbo bags. Dude, they're crazy jumbo. I mean, it's good, but it's like, it's almost too jumbo. I don't know. Like, it's massive. <laughs> It's good because when I fold up my skirts and stuff, they can be in here, and if it's extra big, that's fine. But I'm excited about having these to protect my stuff. What else came? I got these combs, which I'm going to sew a couple of them into the hat that I'm about to wear that Lynn made me. Like, just whip stitch them in so that they grip onto my wig better. And I bought some handkerchiefs because... It doesn't ever suck to have handkerchiefs and when you're in costume because you like may need them and then they're also period lovely although I don't think this weird butterfly which I did not totally expect this is what happens when you don't fully look at what you're buying <laughs> but these were like three four bucks so I was like fine whatever <laughs> um, so I'm pretty excited about things coming together and I'm gonna start uh, dealing with this situation and packing all at the same time over the next couple days. So, woo woo. I'll show you guys packing because everyone seems to be really interested in the packing. I'm going to put this dress into that bag with a bunch of skirts and blow out all the air and then throw it into a bag. And that is what packing will be like. But, um, I do like use go bags and stuff. So, uh, they're compression bags, but I call them go bags because they're ready to go at any moment for each costume, so I'll do that. I'll show you guys that stuff. Hello, it's Wednesday. <laughs> uh, yesterday kind of got away from me because I had some upsetting news. So grab a cuppa and I'll tell you about my saga of the trip that continues. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know about my trip, um, I'm going to Europe very shortly on Saturday and some part of this is a costuming tour and I'm deliberately not going to tell you who is running this costuming tour. Those of you who know, know. I don't want to trash talk that person uh, and use their name. So <laughs> I'm going to state what happened though. Um, if you haven't seen my previous vlog on this where I go up to pretty much where we are now. I will leave a link to that down below with a time signature so the rest of you don't have to sit through that whole story again, but drama. So yesterday, Tuesday, was nine days before the trip. We get an email saying that she's discovered that the Sissy Collection has moved from Schoenbarn Palace to a different palace. And so we're gonna go there instead of Schoenbarn. And I'm like, Hi, why would you ever go to Austria and not go to Schoenbrunn Palace? That's like, it's based on Versailles, we're not going to Versailles, I was super excited about it. It's also in our contracts. Like, so is Versailles. A lunch at Versailles and a lunch at Schoenbrunn Palace is actually in our contracts. So she's just removing it unilaterally, nine days before the trip, without asking us how we felt. 
and it's in the contract and on the schedule online. I get it, the Sissy Collection is a big deal, but like, Sherman Palace is a big deal too, and it's what was guaranteed. And it's honestly one of the two reasons I signed up for this trip almost exclusively to go costume at Versailles because I thought she had some in. She's like, oh, it just, it just changed. I'm like, no, it didn't change. Like, everybody has known for years and years that you can't costume at Versailles. And also the Sissy Collection moved quite a while ago. I have a friend who saw it over there years ago. So I don't know. Anyway, so... <laughs> So I sent her a letter yesterday expressing my displeasure with like pretty much everything and I kept to the stuff that was in the contract so I didn't discuss any of the details about um, how I felt about our luggage restrictions and all that other stuff but the amount of changes that have, have been made since we started is ridiculous. Like this is a tour, like with a tour company. It's not really a tour company, it's just one lady who's running this, but she's purporting herself as a business who runs tours. You can't say you're gonna go to this city and see this palace and then be like, yeah, I decided that this this other thing would be better, so we're just gonna do that instead. I'm like, no. And she's she's acting like Versailles and Trenburn Palace don't have any historical or, or fashion significance, which they both do. So, so anyway, you can imagine my dismay. I did ask, uh, a few people in my close circle of friends slash family who are let's just say of the legal profession <laughs> and <laughs> sent them the contracts so they've seen it um, and gotten the advice that this isn't okay so I sent her an email back saying this isn't okay and here's why um, like not only did you not ask us you just made a unilateral decision without like consulting the group but also this isn't your family vacation it's just not, you can't just change things that are in a contract that you have with people. So this morning I got a reply from her and it was, um, I don't know. Part of it was gracious in that she offered to buy me a ticket to Schoenburn Palace. Um, cause we do have an afternoon free, which I was planning on doing anyway, now that she canned it. So I'll take her ticket. Um, and also Versailles with a train ticket, although the only possible time that I could go to Versailles would be the, to either miss fabric shopping and go, or we have a four hour block of other time, which essentially would mean I would have about an hour, hour and a half at Versailles, because it's an hour to an hour and a half train ride each way. So I declined her offer of a ticket and a train ride to Versailles, but she did offer it, so to be fair, she offered those things. Um, but she also like sort of belittled me in her email saying like, oh, I pinned my hopes on going to these palaces. I'm like, no, these palaces were what you sold us. Like you said, hey, we're gonna go to Austria and we're gonna visit Schoenburn Palace. Not, hey, we're gonna go visit the Sissy Collection, wherever that may be, or wherever I decide we might go. She, like it specifically says in our contract that. Anyway, so the thing about it that like pisses me off the most is that she does it like, nine days before the trip goes like she's been changing things like once a month for the last eight months <laughs> but she did it nine days before the trip and i'm just like are you kidding me like i am so over this and she's like not supplying the things that are in the contract like really she should offer everyone a ticket to Schoenberg palace because it's really not fair that <sighs> she's like oh no one else has complained and i'm like you know, introverts sometimes don't want to complain. Sometimes they're scared and sometimes they just don't want to ro rock the boat and sometimes they just, they're too introverted to do it. And that's not fair to just assume that everyone would just say something if they weren't happy with it. Like, you should ask. So, anyway, I sent her an email back thanking her for the ticket, declining the one, and like letting her know that this is really unacceptable. A did basically belittle me and when it's very clear that the contract states we're gonna go to these places and also I'm not the only one that's unhappy. I can only speak for myself, but I am not the only one that's unhappy about this. So I don't know. I just, I wouldn't recommend this at all. I'm sure I'm gonna go and I'm sure I'm gonna have fun because I'm with my friends and it's Europe and we will go see cool stuff. And my friend Galen decided to email me and just be like, every moment that we have by ourselves, that we are free to do what we want, we're just gonna go do all the stuff that she's incompetent at getting us to. So Galen is helping save my trip. <laughs> so thank God for her. You'll probably see her in, in the videos, I'm sure, because we're gonna be doing stuff together. Wow, my room's a mess, look at that. 
the hair is still straight. I'm gonna, as soon as I'm done talking to you about this, I'm gonna go uh, curl that, I promise. Like right now, I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna try one and then I'm gonna do it. <sighs> anyway, that is the drama with the trip right now. It's pretty much settled. I'm still going on the trip. I'm marginally upset about it, but I mean, what can I do, right? So she did offer me the ticket and she'll pay for it. So at least she's like doing what she's contractually ob obliged to. I just sort of feel bad for all the people who aren't seeing something that are also going on this trip. Is anyone who's watching this video going on this trip also? I would love to know that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go try one curl. I'm gonna steam it the heck out of it. I don't really know how to do that because I just have an iron with steam. I did buy a steamer and it is coming here tomorrow. So I'm probably gonna bring it with me on my trip. We'll see. Uh, so I'm gonna try this steam and freeze method and we'll see how that goes and I'll show you. And then if it doesn't work, I'll just do the boil water, get really hot water thing and then dip them in it and then let it dry and I'll figure it out by Friday. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so these rollers are really thin and I was like, I don't really want the same curls that are here. I want them to be fatter. So Lynn said wrap some tissue paper on it. I don't really have tissue tissue paper, but I have this like thicker tissue paper. So I'm gonna use that and see how this goes. Welcome to my guest room. <laughs> um, I guess I should turn on the light. I think that'll make it more yellow though. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, I'm just showing this thing. These are this my putty coat um, for the 18th century and my under putty coat. And I picked them up from the bottom edges because it's the most squared off part. So I picked them up that way and then I folded them in half and half again and then I folded that into thirds and this is what is left. I am actually trying to make this so I can fold it in half. Um, so I'm going to go get my dress and stick it in there also. And then that is a pair of like bloomer shorts that I wear underneath stuff because modesty. And then um, also my hoops and I haven't figured out if I'm going to put those in here or not. So we'll see. Oh, everyone, this is Big T. Big T is as old as I am. I got given him when I was born, basically. He's been through life with me, just so you know. This is my old friend, Big T. Okay, here's my dress. Um, I just folded it in half and then in thirds, but long ways so that it would fit. So there's like the bottom of the skirt. Right, is that right? Yeah, bottom of the skirt is there and then it goes like this and then back and then like that. So that all fits in there. I think this is what I'm going to put in this bag. And then I'm going to put my um, hoops and my stays and my shorts and like all my underwear layer um, in another one. So I have no reason for that. Just really no reason. Excuse the lawnmower next door. <laughs> Alright, she's back out of the freezer. I'm gonna attempt to do this on camera to see what- oh my gosh, that totally works. Probably would have worked even better had I used more steam. So, endorse this method. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of the curlers in. I might recurl this one again just to see if I can get I don't know, it's pretty good. Like, I'm into it. Um, anyway, and then when I travel, I think I'm gonna go buy some more of these clips and then clip them back up so that they're sort of like this when they travel, so they're not so smashed, I guess. I should also probably find a box to put this in. Oi, oi, okay. Okay, I have three more in. I was gonna try to do the whole head. So there's the first one and then three more. Um, and you just, I have this head form basically and I just pin straight through the curler onto this to hold it. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do these and freeze them and see how they come out. Um, because uh, there's not like, like enough room to pin all of them and I think it wouldn't get enough like steam and stuff. So I think it's better if I do them in chunks. <laughs> or when you guys ask like, hey, how do you decide when you buy things or when you make them? I forgot. <laughs> I should have gotten Jenny LaFleur to make me a wig. <sighs> but I didn't. So, for next time, I thought I would answer a couple more questions that people are leaving down below while I sit and wait for that. Someone asked what my favorite fantasy novel is. 
Ooh, that's rough because like, what do you count as fantasy, right? Is it just high fantasy? Like, I don't really read high fantasy. I don't, I don't love high fantasy. Uh, Harry Potter, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I'm a nerd, so I like Lord of the Rings. Um, but I read a lot of urban fantasy, so my favorites of those are um, the Harry Dresden series. I really like the Iron Druid series, and I really like, um, I don't know what they call her, Dead Witch Walking series by Kim Harrison. She's awesome. You should check her out. Have you had any ideas of next year's costume college? I have and I haven't. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do for that. I don't know. I know that I don't want a costume as much as I did. So I may only wear one thing. I may not wear anything next year. I'm not sure. Uh, show us cats. Okay, so I don't show cats on here because I don't want to be the crazy cat lady. <laughs> Unless that cat arrives in this room, I don't show it. Also, I'd have to leave this room in order to show you guys that. And aside from this room and my guest room, I kind of like keeping my house private. So I do hope the cats have an Instagram though. It's at Gatos de Padawan. Uh, I'll leave a link to that down below and you can check out my cats down there. Talk about my machine. Okay. Um, this is my Bernina 1130. It is a dream machine. I love it. It says like butter. Um, it's fantastic. I don't have anything else to say about it. My grandma taught me how to sew on this machine. She got this machine like in the 80s. And for a really long time, I wasn't allowed to go anywhere near it because it was like $2,000 in the, in the 80s, which, you know, I mean, $2,000 for a sewing machine is actually a lot now. I mean, yes and no, but you can definitely get a, a I have, I have another sewing machine that was $300. So yeah, I wasn't allowed to touch it as a child without her being present. Um, but when she had her eyes go, she called me up and said, hey, do you want to come get it? And I was like, yes, I do right now. My mom was pissed because she kind of wanted it. Um, it was made in Switzerland and it is all metal, so it's extremely heavy. So whenever I have to take this to costume college, I get super cranky about that. <laughs> I was super cranky at costume college because I had to bring it this year and I didn't end up sewing even one stitch. So it's like a giant waste of transporting this thing. Um, I also don't like transporting it because I don't know what it... Like that jostle stuff around in there and stuff so i could bring my other machine but i don't like sewing on it as much i mean i love that machine and it it'll do in a pinch but i love this machine so yeah it's a it's a great solid machine but it's nothing new it's nothing exciting it's nothing it's just old and reliable but not as old as an antique is and so therefore uninteresting it's 80s old it's vintage. That makes me vintage. I'm over 25. Does that mean I'm vintage? I think it does. Okay, here's how they came out. Like, I'm kind of, I'm very happy with this one. And these two were kind of meh. So, I might redo them. We'll see. I'm going to pin them up, though, and into curls, and then I might steam them with the pin in, too. We'll see. Sounds like there's a bomb outside, but really, it's just a plane. Um, so I lied. I put my stays and my hoops in here. I'm gonna put all the other stuff in another bag, but for those purposes, I'm gonna put this whole, like, costume in here. And this sad, desiccated mess is what's left over from getting all the air out. So, uh, the thing about it, and why I, I mean, I could absolutely probably fit both costumes into one suitcase, is the, uh, three weeks worth of muggle clothes, but also the weight of this. Like, this is really heavy, actually. It's heavier than you'd think it would be. So, that's another reason I really need to bring two suitcases. Oh, I should sign up for luggage storage. Oi. And that slot's extremely well in here. Please remember, though, that I also have to bring a pair of shoe- actually, two pairs of shoes for this, because one I'm walking in and one I am posing in. A wig, a hat, like, there's so much stuff else that goes in this, and it all has to fit in this side, along with my down comforter. <laughs> so, yeah, because I need this half to take two weeks worth of clothes and uh, makeup and all that kind of stuff in. So, that is why I'm concerned. <laughs> okay, so this is what I was talking about. I got gallon bags. This is for the Regency outfit. Um, but And these are things that Lynn loaned me, so I want to make sure they're taken care of. So... This is a pashmina, these are two reticules, and this is a fan. She loaned me a second fan, which happens to be in there with that hat, so I'm just going to leave it in there with that hat, because it's probably very safe in there. Oh, packing is stressful. I'm like, I hope it all makes it. <laughs> 
sigh. Here's my packing pro tip that I think is really important is clean as you go. Like as you're packing, also clean. Like you should end up with a completely clean whatever, work area, surface, bed, whatever you're working on when you're done. So like as I am putting things in piles that I know I need to bring with me, I'm also putting other stuff that I don't need away so it does not confuse me or and like stuff doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Because man, that is a thing. You're like, oh, I forgot X because it's sitting right underneath this other pile of stuff. Like that happens to me all the time. So mm. I think with the wig, I'm not going to put it in a box. I think I'm going to put it in a Ziploc bag and fluff it up when I get there. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> it's in the freezer right now, getting a couple more curls. I think I just have to do like a couple at a time. So I think I probably have a couple more badges. Before I can look at them all together, but whatever they are, that's what they are. I'm gonna slap a hat on it and call it good. I don't care that much at this point. Like I'm so over this trip. So <laughs> whatever that hair. As soon as I get home, that thing's probably gonna go in the trash, and I'm gonna call up Jenny Lafleur and be like, "Yo, I need me a hedgehog or something good. Make it so. Here's the money." So there is a case for checkbook engineering when. You're just not good enough at <laughs> something. I, I will keep practicing and I, I hope to get to get good enough for that, but this is one of those things, like you ask. My interest level is not high enough to like justify doing a bunch of that instead of doing like for example more sewing or hat making or any of the other things I'm super into. So <sighs> okay. Back to it and here's what the final looks like uh, I have one that is just like a fail so I might try this one again but I might also just not <laughs> I'm gonna put it on and see what it looks like okay well I won't have the glasses on so let me just take those off um, but and this will need to get frizzed out like a lot more when I get there but that's basically it I find this acceptable. I'm gonna try on the hat with it and see how that looks, and as long as that looks good, then I'm calling it. I'm gonna pin this up, throw it in a bag, and throw it in my suitcase and call it good. Oi, I'm done with this wig. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of holding everything in place, but this is this is a good feeling of what it will look like, which I am satisfied with. I need to like fix a couple of these curls and then I'm moving on with life. So <laughs> we'll see about that, but I'm gonna look at it, maybe do one more, and then pack it up. Okay, so my hat's in that box, I have pockets and other stuff in there. And then what I'm gonna do is put my um, comforter into the side also, so it like pads all this stuff. And I guess I'm gonna put more of it in this section, because I have an empty hole here. You would think that I would want to put this wig in that hole, because I put it back in this thing. I'm kind of wondering if I should just... Put it in a plastic bag. I think it'd be more, more squishy and then I could put it in that hole. Yeah, maybe they'll do that. And then I will go ahead and put my comforter on top and believe me, it will squish way the heck down. Like, it goes almost flat. Like, it's surprising how a comforter like that can fit in here. And the rest of my clothes aren't completely in here, but this is 15 or something shirts. Um, all my underwear and socks. Um, now you've seen my, my panties have been on the internet. Um, so, you know, we're getting there. I have like basically all the clothes I need except maybe some pants. Um, and I, so I want to pack up like another thing that's like this size, um, with an extra pair of jeans or two, so maybe dress pants, a dress shirt, and like a jacket and a rain jacket, stuff like that. These are called packing cubes. Their compression, so you, when I stuck my stuff in here, it was like this big, and then it like down when I do it. I only put, I think, seven or eight shirts in each one of these. I can get up to ten shirts in them, but it's tight and it doesn't, it's unnecessary if I need two of these anyway, so. Uh, so I packed it up. That's done, and therefore, that's done. Who's super excited? I am super excited. <laughs> now I can do something I have wanted to do forever. And by the way, I'm early. It's Wednesday. This board is Klein. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited about this part. 
Okay, well, I think I'm actually just gonna wrap things up here. I'm just gonna keep packing. You guys know what packing looks like. Thank you very much for suffering through this, like, 18th century wig making experiment. Uh, hopefully it wasn't super painful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go charge up, like, everything having to do with my camera, and the next time I talk to you guys, I will be on my way to Europe for our grand adventure. And like I said, I will post from there. I don't know how often I will, but I'll put them up as I have, like, enough footage for, for it to warrant that. But I have a feeling I'm gonna have enough footage to warrant that, so you guys may get inundated with a bunch of, um, vlogs, or you may get, like, one a week. I'm not sure. Anyway, I hope you guys had a good time. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you guys from Europe or the plane or wherever I decide to start next time. I am super excited about going the tour part. I am trying to be super positive and hopeful about, so hopefully, hopefully that's warranted and everything will be cool. Um, I'm sure it will be a good time no matter what happens. So yeah, okay, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.